morning. Praise the Lord. Welcome. It's Pentecost Sunday, where the Spirit of the Lord fell upon them, and they were endued with power. Praise the Lord. Sandra, would you come and read our scripture this morning? I'll get the microphone on for you. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone Everyone, everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other language as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's stand if you're able to, and uh, don't feel that you have to stand the whole worship. If you get weary, that's okay. You may be seated, and uh, we welcome those who are online this morning in your home, wherever you're watching from, and just enter in to the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is here. His Spirit is here. We can rejoice together. Hallelujah. Not by might, nor Not by, by power, power, by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Not by might, nor by power, by my spirit. This mountain shall be removed. This mountain shall be removed. This mountain shall be removed. I must be said the Lord. Is there a mountain in your way? Do doubts and fears abide? This mountain shall come down, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. This mountain shall be removed, this mountain shall be removed. trial far more than you can bear behold the blessed son of god is walking with you there not by might nor by power but by my spirit said the lord of hosts not by might nor by power but by my spirit said the lord Not by might, 
by my spirit, saith the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, I remember in this next song, you know something. I, I remember years ago, we would go to sing this next song. It's called Old Time Power. And the verse says, oh, Lord, send the power just now. And I know there's preachers everywhere. They're going, and I believe it, that we, he's already sent the power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can see you're all excited about that. Amen. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, he's already sent the power of God. But you know what? I do believe that there is a point in all of this that we all need to say, Lord, send the power on me. Praise the Lord. We can invite Holy Spirit to fill us anew. You see, the infilling of the Holy Spirit is just not a one-time experience. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Turn your neighbor and say, mm -mm. it's not a one-time experience. Glory to God. It, yeah, the Bible says, be being filled. That, that sounds like a, a, something that happens again and again and again and again and again and again. But here's what happened on the day of Pentecost. Sandra read it. They were in an upper chamber. They were all in one accord. When the Holy Ghost descended, as was promised by our Lord. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Everyone is an old Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. Oh, Lord, send the power just now. And baptize everyone. Yes, there's power from heaven descended with the sound of a rushing wind. Tongues of fire came.
Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Yes. Fill us with your power. Yes. Live inside of me. Let me sing that again. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in your presence. Inside of me, beyond the living water, never drying fountain, comforter and counselor, take complete control. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We are in. Inside of me, live inside of me, live inside of me, live inside of me. Inside of me. So let the rain of your presence fall on me. Every day that I live, with every breath I breathe, let the rain of your presence fall on me. Let your breath flow. 
for you bring times of a refreshing times of a refreshing times of a refreshing to my soul when I'm weary from the fight trying to do what's right you bring times of refreshing to my soul You bring times of refreshing to my soul. When I'm weary from the fight, trying to do what's right, you bring times of refreshing to my soul. Well, I thank you, Lord, that you are my Savior. You're my strength and you're my rock on which I stand. You give me life and a grace that's greater. When I humble myself beneath your mighty hand. For oh, you bring times of refreshing. Times of refreshing. Times of refreshing to my soul when I'm weary from the fight and time to do what's right. Won't you bring times of refreshing to my soul? You bring times of refreshing, times of refreshing, times of refreshing. To my soul, when I'm weary from the fight, trying to do what's right, for oh, you bring times of refreshing to my soul. You bring times of refreshing to my soul, to my soul. You bring times of refreshing to my soul. still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe. Yes, we can see it. The wonders are still what you do. Bodies are still being made. Giants are still being slain. are still what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. Set our hearts on you. Come and do Cause we need a move. We need a move. Mountains are still being moved. Strongholds are still being loosed. God, we believe. Yes, we can see it. The wonders are still what you do. 
Giants are still being raised. Giants are still being slain. God, we believe. Yes, we can see it. Good wonders are still what to do. We are here for you. We'll let you move. Holy Spirit. We'll let Holy you move. Spirit. We'll Lord, let welcome. you move, Lord. Lord welcome, Holy Spirit. Yes, we'll let you move. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 When you say whole, welcome, Holy Spirit, you better be prepared. Because he's going to show you stuff in your heart that shouldn't be there. He's going to expose some stuff that shouldn't be there. So many of us won't say welcome. Because we don't want that dealt with. But Holy Spirit the power of God to overcome, the power of God to heal that thing in our heart. That's what we have access to. You are welcome, Holy Spirit, to burn, to burn that out of us. We want to line up with you. Not just to get a blessing and not just to have a happy time, but God, to work in our hearts. So you are welcome. If you can say that today, then he will come and he will heal you. He will deliver you. He will restore everything that the enemy has stolen from you. Because that's what his Holy Spirit does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Open your heart to him today. Open your heart. Say, Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, you come. You are welcome. You are welcome. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to let you touch my heart. Hallelujah. Just cry out to him right now. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. 
You are welcome. You are welcome. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Touch my heart, Lord. Heal my heart, Lord. Restore, oh God, empower me. Do your work, oh God, we cry out to you. We want you to move in us, oh God. Move in us, oh God. Move in us, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Never drying fountain. Holy Spirit. Comforter and counselor. Comforter. Counselor. Take complete control. We are the living waters. Never drying fountain. thirsting of my soul, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no fill my cup, fill it up, and make me Things 
Do you know he is more willing to fill you up? He is more willing to fill you up? Do you realize you just have to be the open container? (laughs) Talking about containers, you're probably wondering, what in the world is this? Well, actually, it is an actual scroll from Israel. I have two of them in my possession. This one happens to be the book of Ruth. You say, well, why, Pastor Ron, in the world would you bring that out? You can come and have a look at it a little bit later. I've never even opened it up to to, to read it, but you're welcome to to, uh, have a look at it. And if we we have time, you can even open it and and uh, read some of the scripture right out of Ruth. Now you say, Pastor Ron, why in the world would you bring that out? Well, it's like this. Do you realize that during these days of uh, Shabbat, or celebrating Pentecost, that during the week they're actually reading the book of Ruth? Do you know what Ruth is all about? My she, was, uh, she wasn't even a, a Jew. A- and you know what? She began to glean the gleanings. Boaz. She began to glean the gleanings. Why did she do that? Well, she was willing. And you got to be willing to let your cup be filled with the Holy Ghost. And if you need blessing and you want blessing and you desire blessing and you need a touch in your body and you need a filling of the, of the Holy Spirit, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it and we will be open vessels for you. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Hallelujah. So they were reading. I mean, to this week they were reading about the gathering, and you gotta, if you 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 got you want them, you gotta you gotta get to them. The Bible says, "Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you." We think God's just going to pour out and dump on us. Well, you know something? Those disciples, Sandra read it. Those disciples, I haven't even started preaching yet. Those disciples, they had to go and wait in Jerusalem. In fact, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 says, The feast of Pentecost came. And they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from, and it filled the whole building. Then, like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through, through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit gave them. And there were many Jews, many Jews. Staying in Jerusalem just then. Devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, what were they there? When they heard the sound, they come on a run. Because this was the feast of Pentecost. When they heard the sound, one after another, their own, they heard their own mother tongues being spoken. They were, this scripture says, thunderstruck. They couldn't for the life of them, figure out what was going on and kept saying to, they kept saying, aren't these Galileans? How come we hear them speak and talk in, a, in our various mother tongues? Perinthians, Medes, Elamites, visitors from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Pergamos and, and uh, Pan. Pamphyra and Egypt and other parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. They were there speaking our languages, describing the mighty works of God. Well, their heads were spinning. I'm just telling you, this is, this is out of the Message Bible. I'm kind of liking it these days. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make a head or tail out of any of it. They, they talked back and forth and, and what's going on here? And others joke, well, these guys are just drunk on cheap wine. But then Peter stood up. And he was backed by the other eleven spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk as some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel this is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God said, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy, also your daughters. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, both men and women, and they will prophesy. I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon uh, blood red before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvelous, and whoever calls out for help, God says, I will answer them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, let me tell you, Pentecost provides hope and direction. Say it with me. Hope and direction. Pentecost provides hope and direction. Do you, when you read the prophet Joel, you can't help but think about Pentecost. And you know, Peter found a really good Pentecostal sermon in the book of Joel. <laughs> the prophet Joel is speaking to a nation who is in a plague. Not a virus, but a plague of locusts. 
Do you know that when he wrote, the economy was shattered and the places of worship had closed? It's beginning to rain. (laughs) He didn't have rain. Joel did not have rain. The economy was shattered and the places of worship were closed. In Joel chapter 1 verse 9, it says the grain offering and the drink offering are cut off from the house of the Lord. Cut off from the house of the Lord. But Joel provides direction. And everyone say that word direction. Joel uh, gives us, provides direction from God. And the Lord says, return. That means to retreat, to get oneself back, to restore, get recovered, to withdraw. Return to me with all your hearts, with fasting and weeping, with mourning. Consecrate, that means to dedicate or sanctify, to appoint a special time, a fast. Call a solemn assembly. I know we're all praying. Perhaps like never before in these days. Do not grow weary, but return to the Lord with all your heart. Return to the Lord with all your heart. Return to the Lord with all your heart. And I would speak to Canada. And I would say, return to the Lord with all your heart. Canada, return to the Lord. Return to the Lord. To the Lord. Pray. Return to the Lord. Canada. Return to the Lord. Don't go weary. Let's turn from our own sin. Canada. Return. Return to God. Turn from your sin. Turn from our lawlessness. Joel 2 verse 13 says, don't tear it, don't tear. King James uses the word rend, rend your hearts. NLT says, don't tear your clothing in your grief, but tear, cut out your hearts instead. Return to the Lord your God. Why would we return to the Lord our God? For He is merciful and He is compassionate. He's slow to anger and filled with unfailing love. He's eager to relent and not punish. Verse 14, who knows? Perhaps He will give you a reprieve, sending you a blessing instead of a curse. Perhaps you will be able to offer grain and wine to the Lord your God as before. Blow the ram's horn in Jerusalem. Announce a time of fasting. Call the people together for a solemn assembly. I read this and I went, dear Lord, we gather on Wednesday night. But perhaps this Wednesday night, we can call a solemn assembly. And perhaps those that can, we do without our supper meal. And we rend our hearts and not our garments. See, God is moving over all the earth today but we must pray I was telling the folks that were gathered on on, uh, Wednesday night I received news from our friends Don and Victoria James who was our Israel tour host they were praying for the salvation of Israel and for the church to see Israel's place in God's heart on a zoom call And uh, after some time in in prayer, a man unmuted, his name was Mordecai. He was a believer in northern China. A believer in northern China. 
And they said, did he pray? He prayed with depth and wisdom and great travail. He said, we felt like we were kindergarten. We were in the kindergarten prayer in comparison with the way this believer prayed. Maybe we are. Maybe we all are. But I'll tell you what, there are people in different lands. We think in here in Canada, you know, even the states, we think we've got it all. We think we've got the greatest prayer warriors. But I'm here to say there are people in other lands, whether it's China that has restrictions and other lands that has restrictions. I'll tell you, the Lord is building his church. And there is a people there. It's like a great army that are praying and waiting on God in all the depth of their faith. Oh, the depth of her faith. If we would only realize that God delights in our coming to him. Jesus told us that our gracious and merciful father would never leave us. But he invites us to seek him with all our hearts. It does not matter what country or language or age or lockdown or push down or shut down. It doesn't matter. All you need is faith in Jesus and a heart that will seek him. Paul the Apostle in Galatians 3, 5 says, I'm going to ask you again, does God give the Holy Spirit and work miracles because you obey the law? Of course not. It is because you believe the message you heard about Christ. In the same way, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. We are to walk by faith. We are to pray in faith. In uh, James, the half-brother of Jesus wrote in James chapter 1, If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. In chapter 4, 2, he says, You lust and you do not have. You murder and you covet and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. Verse 3, he says, You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. Some people... They don't receive because they do not ask or ask out of wrong motives. But Matthew 21, 22 says you can pray for anything. You can pray for anything. And if you have faith, you will receive it. Now, Mark 11, 24, I say to you, Whatsoever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. How are you, on, are you, are you I say to the uh, people that are watching online as those in-house, how are you on, you are, are you on talking terms with God? Are you talking to him? Are you asking him? The last few weeks we've been talking about sitting with God. Have you taken the time to sit with God? To hear him? I'll tell you what. It, um, Hebrews chapter 11 says it is impossible to please God with, without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Praise God. So, Joel, he gives us, he provides direction from God. Return, return, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Consecrate, set aside some time to prepare a fast for calling a solemn assembly. He gives us direction. Even during the, 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 the drought that he has, during, during the famine that Joel is in. 
but he just doesn't give us direction. What's the other thing Joel gives us? Hope. He, Joel offers much hope for the immediate situation and for the long-term outcome. He seems to prophesy God, God's intervention. He says things will improve and the harvest, the harvest, the harvest will come. The fig tree and the vine will, will, will give their full seed. God will pour out of his spirit in a new way on all flesh. Not just kings and prophets will prophesy. He says all flesh, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men, praise God, that lets me in. Oh, the old men, I'm not even that all that old. The old men shall dream dreams. Praise God. Yeah, then the other part, he says, as the locust plague was the day of the Lord in his day, there will be a day. There will be a great day of the Lord. When Israel will be attacked by nations, the Lord will enter into judgment with the nations and he'll establish his kingdom on the earth and Jesus will dwell in Zion, his holy mountain. So there is much hope. There is much hope. There is much hope. Praise God for his direction, but praise the Lord for his hope. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Joel says, fear not. Joel 2, 21. Fear not, earth. Be glad and celebrate. God has done great things. Fear not, wild animals. The fields and the meadows are greening up. The trees are bearing fruit again. Bumper, a bumper crop of fig tree and vines. The children of Zion celebrate. Be glad in your God. He is giving you a teacher. He is giving you a teacher to train you how to live right. Teaching like rain out of heaven, showers of words to refresh and nourish your souls, just as he used to. Verse 24 says, and plenty of food for your body, for your silos, full of grain. So when you read, in chapter 2, Jerusalem was full of Jews. See, Pentecost was celebrating harvest as well as the giving. It was celebrating the giving of the law. See, the Holy Spirit was poured out on that day in order to write the law of their, to order to write the law of God on their hearts. Jesus did not come to abolish the law, but to enable us to fulfill it. Through the Holy Spirit. Let me say this. This is Pentecost Sunday. We're celebrating the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit outpouring was not just an event. Hear me. It was not just an event. It was a living person giving us a sign that God was about to do something special. Did you get that? Hallelujah. Jeremiah 31, 33 says it like this. But this is the new covenant I will make with the people of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my instructions deep within them and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. The wind and the fire in the upper room were the reminders of the wind and the fire on Mount Sinai. Jews read Ezekiel. One on Pentecost or Shabbat. Ezekiel saw chariots of, of God and the glory of God. But so did the Israelites see, see it. They saw the presence of God on Mount Sinai when the law was given. In fact, Psalm 68, 17 says, Surrounded by unnumbered thousands of chariots, the Lord came from Mount Sinai into his sanctuary. Okay, that's big. That's big. That's big. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So Pentecost is celebrating the giving of the law. And Acts 2, he gives them the ability to live it. We think it's, speak, it's all about speaking in tongues. He gives them the ability to live the law that was written in their hearts. It's a Jewish holiday, yes, that commemorates the most single important event in Israel's history. It was the giving of the law, the giving of the Torah. It was the giving of the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. You know, we, we think it's, you know, they, they talk about the, the Feast of Booths and, and the, there's a lot of major feasts in, in uh, Israel, but this one, more than 3,000 years ago, after leaving e Egypt on the night of Passover, listen now, Passover is the celebration of um, the Jews coming out of it was actually the deliverance of Israel out of Egypt. And 50 days after Passover is Shabbat, Pentecost. 50 days after receiving deliverance from, Israel, from Egypt. See, huh. wow. Moses reminded the people in Deuteronomy that they experienced divine revelation when God gave the, the Jewish people his law. And Moses reminded the people of that experience. He said, remember that day you stood before the Lord, your God at Horeb, Sinai. You came near and stood at the, front of the, at the foot of the mountain while it was blazed with fire to, to the heavens with black clouds and deep darkness. Then the Lord spoke. He declared to you his covenant, the Ten Commandments, which he commanded you to follow, and then wrote them on two tablets. Shabbat is the culmination of the, of the weeks between Passover and the giving of the law. Passover occurs 50 days after the first Passover. It sometimes it's actually known as, as Shavuot, as uh, Pentecost, which in the Greek means 50. Isn't that interesting? So Jesus' followers were in Jerusalem. They were celebrating Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was given to them. And, and, and as many uh, churches today celebrate Pentecost as the birth of the church. But I'll tell you, Holy Spirit is not an event. He is a living person giving us a sign that God is up to something special. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So that is the hope. Even before the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Pentecost was a celebration of abundance and blessing. So that's why Joel, he says, like I read before, fear not earth, be glad and celebrate. But you know, the interesting thing, that when Israel was at the foot of the mountain and Moses was reading, you know, the commandments, do you know what the people's response was? All that he says we will do. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> In Luke 24, 44, it says, When I was with you before, Jesus said, I told you that everything was written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms, and they must be fulfilled. Then he says in Luke 24, it is also written that this message would be proclaimed in the authority of his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. There is forgiveness of sin for all who repent. You are witnesses of these things. Now, Jesus says, and now I will send the Holy Spirit just as my father promised. But stay here in the city until... 
Stay there in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power. So here it is on Pentecost. Praise the Lord. Just as God gave the, the law to, to Israel, they were celebrating that 50 days. They were having the law of God poured into them. They were having the, the, uh, the, the one that would help them live what they had learned. It wasn't just in their hearing. Now it was being poured out on him. In uh, uh, Acts chapter 1, once he was eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until uh, the Father sends you the gift he promised. As I told you before, John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And you will receive, verse 8 says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses. Telling the people about me everywhere. In Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and Here's the part that lets us in to the ends of the earth. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, what are we to do? Joel gives us direction and he gives us hope. Are you going to be amongst them that says, all that he says I will do? Do you desire him? You see, do you realize that in the, in the uh, Shabbat that the Lord gives a blessing? And in fact, it goes like this. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. See, may the Lord bless you and keep you. That means he will protect, he will watch over, and he will guard. They actually say this in their synagogues. It would be yesterday. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The light that God shines on me will eliminate, illuminate my life and your life. And we will become aware of God's goodness and abundance, praise God. And the light, that inner light will reflect God's light. And then it says, may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. That word countenance means face. God's face is upon you. Praise the Lord. We need the face. As God puts his face, when he face in, in, in the light of his countenance shines on us, we will reflect him in all we do. And God will put peace within us, a peace that makes us to be at peace with even our enemies. Then you will experience God's peace that experiences and exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your mind as you live in Christ Jesus. You can choose, you can choose to receive the direction of the prophet. And Peter, on the day of Pentecost, he shares that same thought. What God, that God will give you direction in your life, but he will also give you a hope. Praise the name of the Lord. You can choose to reject it, or you can re choose to receive it. Praise the name of the Lord. I think it's important for us to say, fill my cup, Lord. On this Pentecost Sunday, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Appreciate those that have been watching online. We appreciate those that are in-house. And uh, may the Lord work in your, in your heart and in your life as you respond to him in Jesus' name. Sing it with me. Fill my cup, Lord. Fill my 
my cup on I lift it up Lord come and quench the thirsting of my soul bread of heaven feed me till I want no more fill my cup fill it up and make me whole can I suggest this just before we close this service I'd like to sing this song again but can we just take our hands and hold them out in front of us like a cup? Father, as we cup our hands together, and we offer you our lives afresh. We offer you our lives so that you can fill us afresh. Thank you, Lord, that for those that know Jesus, we do have Holy Spirit living and dwelling in us. But Lord, we also recognize that there is a filling up there is a filling up with your power. And Lord, I ask that those that are thirsty, and you, you said in your word that if we believe, we will receive. And Lord, I pray for those that have never been baptized with your spirit. Oh, they have you as Lord and Savior. But I'm asking you in the name of Jesus that you would fill them whether it's here in the service, whether it's later on even in their, on their beds where, when they sleep. I'm asking you, Lord, to infuse them, to come upon them in a fresh way. We know you dwell in them, but now, Lord, I'm asking you to pour, pour into us and we receive you. We receive the works of your spirit, the gifts of your spirit. And I ask you, Lord, for that sign that accompanies your filling in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Let your spirit dwell in us and let your spirit work through us for your honor and for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.